Hey, thanks for joining me. I get the opportunity to showcase uh, independent comic again today. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, this is called Death Slinger. And this is a new graphic novel. You can see that it's kind of a thicker book. It's not your standard kind of floppy comic book sized work um, by some independent creators. Um, Cosmic Lions Productions. Um, these guys I'm aware of because I had the great fortune um, of being a part of their most recent Ghost Agents book. I've already done a video on this and the other two copies of the Ghost Agents book that I have where, you know, it's this big book with all these varying stories of crazy, off-the-wall, interesting um, 60s sci-fi spy stuff. I've, I've done a whole video on this, but I was fortunate enough to uh, have the opportunity to have my artwork seen here in this book. And um, this is one of my, uh, this is one of the highlights of my life, uh, getting to see my work printed specifically on newsprint and uh, get a story that was colored and uh, printed up in this awesome Ghost Agents book. But Cosmic Lion Productions, um, I'm not going to pretend to know everything about them, so I can't like exactly speak for them, but it's a group of guys that have gotten together, and from everything I can see, I mean, I do follow several of these creators on social media, and um, it's a group of guys getting together. Uh, it's a group of guys with the passion for the art form, passion for comics as an art medium, and they're putting together works, and they're making a name for themselves. They're making moves. Um, the reason I have this paper right here is because you can order this book from previews. And there's a code right there to order it. So I'm going to list list this in the uh, description of the video. But I wanted to make sure that it's sitting right here so people can see. It's, um, you know, they, they hit me up and asked me if I'd be willing to review the book. I'm, of course, I've, I've stated often that one of the uh, happy things I'm kind of, you know, excited to do is there's a book out there somebody's putting together and they're trying they're, they want to get it seen everyone wants to get their work seen right um it's kind of important for you to get copies into people's hands i mean you put a bunch of effort into this and you know again i'm not speaking for any of these gentlemen but you know i bet you they'd be all making these comics anyway but it's a lot of time and effort invested getting a little return on your investment making a few bucks off it so you can keep going and keep doing it well, it helps, and I get that, and so I'm happy with the little voice that I have on my channel. Um, you know, I've got some subscribers that have joined up, and I've kind of grown a little bit, and I, it's, uh, it's, it's shocking to me. I know I say that all the time, but um, I'm happy to kind of share this stuff and get the word out there in any way that I can, because, you know, I like the phrase, right? It, rising tides raises all ships, right? Um if one person's doing good, then we're all kind of doing good. We can all boost each other up. We can all support each other. And it's always fun to see a bunch of passionate guys making a, a book. And then I, I talk about this often, um, about, you know, there are those people out there who talk about the thing they're going to do all the time. I'm going to do this. I've been working on this. Well, these guys wheel this into production and creation, and it's here. So you can actually get your hands on their works, and it's great. So you know, I you know, take the opportunity to watch this video. If you're interested in the in the book, hit them up, grab a copy of it. You know, support the guys, spread the word. You know, I don't usually say I, I'm trying to think if I've ever asked anybody in any of my videos like share my content. I, I, I hate it when I watch all these videos of, on other people. I understand why you do it. I'm probably hurting myself. But I'm never like, hey, if you like my stuff, hit that, you know, smash that like button. I hate that phrase. It gets so old. Um, hit the like button. So ring the bell. Share my content. You know, I don't think I've ever asked anybody to do that. I figure if you enjoy what I do, you do that on your own. But, um, you know, in a case like this, maybe spread the word for these guys. Get it out there. You know, share the video. Get it in front of other people's eyes and, you know, maybe we might run into some people that want to help them out and order up a copy or two or ten of the work here. But Death Slinger, um, it's a pretty epic cover right there. That's pretty awesome. Let's flip it open. We've got writer Shane Berryhill, artist Ben Perkins, letter and graphic designer Keith Finch, and then editor and publisher Eli Schwab. So that's our group of people. Let me, you know, I'm sorry. I'm such a 
cut rate production here. I'm always trying to position my camera to get the optimal kind of viewing on the book here. Anyway, so like I was saying, um, that's the creative team right there. And it's a thick book. Like you get a lot of content in your hands for this. It's uh, it's pretty awesome to, uh, I, I've, I've talked about this and in my own little silly little fan comics that I'm making, for those of you who follow my channel, the fan comic that I've been working on, I'm on volume six of my Masters of the Universe fan comic. But each book is like, 80 pages minimum and I'm I've got five of them made and I'm working on number six it's going to be something like 120 130 pages I make these big books and so I kind of appreciate that so when you get a copy of this thing you're not just getting like a 20 page floppy comic you're getting a bunch of work and um, I, that to me is important you know things like that sometimes it's a thicker book so it shoots the price up but I'm kind of happy to pay a bigger price point if you're getting a substantial amount of work so I think that's great, guys. So good choice on that. This book has got several, like, it's, it's broken up into chapters of kind of the same storyline. Oh, excuse me while I hiccup. It's broken up into chapters, but, um, you know, it's all the kind of the same continuing story. And it just kind of throws you into this world. Um, so it says here, the Holy Reich uh, has fallen, leaving the galaxy in chaos. It was a perfect storm for those who trafficked in blood and war. It was the age of the Death Slinger. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, kind of a brief kind of, you know, that I don't know. Is that like the, it's like the tagline, right? Um, Sci-fi, futuristic, cyberpunk, Mad Max-ish kind of idea. A lot of things that you could kind of... Yeah, I like these ideas when you get a comic or anything, a comic, a TV series, a movie, anything like that, where there's elements from all kinds of stuff that you kind of recognize, but you take the elements that you like. You like a little bit from here and a little bit from here and a little bit from there. Mix it up. Make your own thing. When you start out with, like, cybernetic warrior babe blasting guns, I'm kind of interested instantly. I'm like, all right. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of already interested. You got me. Um, so Ben Perkins, I want to make sure I point out, um, I can't discern exactly. I don't know his work enough to know um, for sure. And if I was better at my job here, I'd probably just hit him up and ask him some questions. And I'm sure I could have. I'm, I've, you know, I'm sure he's a he's a I'm sure he's a fun guy. I think I've had a few com bits of communication with him. But um, my point I'm getting at is I don't know if he works exclusively digitally or not. I don't know. Um, obviously, I'm because sure, he's listed as artist, so he does penciling, inking, colors. Um, so you know, obviously, colors are being done digitally, but I, I can't tell if he draws if this is digital or if it's drawn by hand traditionally on paper and then you know scanned, cleaned up, colored. The thing that I do like is I've talked about this often. This is just my personal opinion. I don't like it when a artwork looks digital, like screams digital line work, where it's super clean and straight and stiff and boring. And it's just a matter of an artist getting the ability to kind of understand the tools they've got and understand the marks they're putting down. If you know what you're doing, you can make your digital work almost indiscernible from like pencil on paper or ink on paper. So as I look at this, I, I mean, I could totally imagine it being drawn by hand. I don't know, but all I know is it has this nice handcrafted organic nature to it. I don't feel the digital, and I appreciate that. So, Mr. Ben Perkins, thank you. You are uh, a hell of an artist. You draw all kinds of stuff in here, and uh, I think it's fantastic. So, thank you. But um, it's kind of, you know, it's... I, I, I'm, I want to kind of go over the comic kind of quickly. I don't want to like go a point by point story breakdown. I want you to buy the comic and experience it, but we'll give you kind of a flip through of it to kind of get an idea of what's going on. You know, um, I mean, when I, when I review other comics for my channel 
I, I'm often, most of the time, doing stuff that's old and everyone's already read. But I'm always kind of leery about taking a story that someone else has done that's brand new and doing my kind of normal page by page, panel by panel breakdown of what's going on. So, you know, I don't want to run the risk of telling you everything you need to know and maybe talk you out of wanting to get it. But it's got kind of like a Star Wars-y vibe, futuristic, cyberpunk type stuff, but also at the same time, poor, run down, dilapidated. There's even a few elements in this that sort of, in a way, reminded me of Firefly, the old uh, Joss Whedon TV show, the science fiction western, brilliant show, where it's old and new at the same time. Like, you know, this this feels like, like you know, it's kind of got a Star Wars-y vibe, I guess. But um, where it's got, like, you know, this is just like, guys with cybernetic enhancements but kind of dirty and worn and used and lived in environment fun but you basically got this you know again you don't get to find out too much right away you're just thrown into the story here's some characters here comes this character presumably the death slinger itself um riding like a speeder bike thing rolls into town runs into people makes you know connections to some characters uh, draws the attention of some others. One of the things I noticed about this book that as I was reading it, that really caught my attention, I'm always, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always kind of, not always, but sometimes it's kind of tricky when you get a brand new book in your hand and it's brand new content. You're always like, is this going to connect with me or not? You're looking for these elements that, what would grab your attention? And for me, one of the things that grabbed my attention in a big way is there's some really great character designs that makes me go, Oh, that would be fun to draw. This Death Slinger girl, robotic kind of lower jaw, like pink hair mohawk, kind of a hot babe girl combined with kind of a creepy looking cyborg technology thing going on. Look at these bug creatures. The ratty little capes around them, their belts and their guns and stuff like that. Um, I believe it says in here somewhere, I probably missed it, but it's like a sci-fi western. And it reads like that, which is why I mentioned the Firefly connection. Except Firefly doesn't have like alien creatures, but then that's what makes this kind of Star Wars. So it's got all these familiar elements. I like the shot of like the gun and the holster. like a It's like a standoff, right? Um, I liked this shot. Double page spread silent no words and you got the the death slinger girl herself looking awesome bug douchebag monsters and then there are these little panels of like holding their guns reaching for it the close-up on their eyes and there's this little fly just traveling through the environment taking you through the story as if to indicate a pause of silence and quiet while they're deciding what they're going to do next um really interesting i wonder if this is like an element that the writer put in there or did the artist decide to do that? I'm kind of curious as to the division of labor and the breakdown of how this was kind of, you know, figured out. I, I bet you they probably were close and shared ideas. If I had to guess, I wouldn't be surprised. But of course, a shootout ensues. And, you know, Ben Perkins' artwork's got kind of a, obviously like a cartoony kind of fun, bouncy vibe to it. It's not a hardcore dead serious thing but it fits, it works, I like it. Um, so that was end of chapter one, we're on to chapter two. You know, monsters chasing our Death Slinger girl, there's big Gatling guns and blowing creatures away. Big use of fun lettering sound effects, look at this bug creature getting shot right in the head, awesome. And then, again, I like the use of coloring to change the environment to know that you're in a different place. Um, again, I, I hope this. I hope the, you know me making comparisons to other things doesn't insult anybody. It's like, hey, you know, judge my work on its own merits, not what I, what it reminds you of. But if it reminds you of something kind of awesome, I mean, I kind of got like a Return of the Jedi Jabba's Palace kind of vibe. Here she is, a den of like thieves, a big slug guy kind of in charge of things. He's got this like snake girl on his arm kind of creepy looking got this like creepy snake girl face snake body i was like what a great design it's kind of like having like the hot babe at your side except she's this creepy snake monster um 
just fascinating to me. Again, I'm like, ah, oh, this would be fun to draw. And then he's got like the cutesy little robot girl design going on. And then there's a whole mystery of this Death Slinger girl having um, flashbacks to things. She kind of sets off. She kind of um, comes across as extremely dangerous. And her personality can change real quick. Look at that splash page of her just like carrying that uh, that like minigun. Spent shells flying all over the place with little smoke trails coming from it. Kind of a psychotic look in her eyes. I love the lighting coming across the top. That is awesome. Just mowing down all these guys. Again, the great use of the coloring and the expression on her face. Just great stuff. And again, it can have like a kind of a cute kind of heartwarming kind of vibe as well. Shifting back and forth from, you know, violent cyberpunk stuff to kind of cutesy stuff. But yeah, this girl, she's just going through all these adventures, meeting different people, uh, getting involved in the towns of uh, the town lives and everything that's going on. Um, uh, a bigger, badder, badass Death Slinger has showed up on scene. They've been talking about this other character who's been gone. And again, another great design. Like cyberpunk to the max. It's great. I was really enjoying all these designs. Like I said, I've said this many times. Like if I, you, you show me a comic and it gives me the vibe, like it makes me want to sit down and draw, you're doing something right. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, who cares what I think? But I love this shot. This had this is with the, this is the first page that for some reason there's this is the first page that made me think of Firefly, and I don't know why exactly. It's like an old western town, and then all the townspeople. There's actually a scene in one of those episodes. Um, where, you know, the crew of Firefly visit a, a, um, a backwater planet and there's a scumball guy running the, the, the town and a, a, there's like a offshoot of like whores that basically that are trying to live their own lives. The guy who runs the town is screwing up their life and their existence. If you know the show, you know the one I'm talking about. For some reason, that episode popped in my mind with this scene here when some guy's up here and he says, you want your whores back? So I'm like, oh, I just kind of clicked that in my mind. Um, great shot of her on the ground being a sniper. Close up on her eye with the little iris that kind of contracts to focus. Smile on her face, pulling the trigger. She's got some, got a weapon to get get some distance, and you know the bullet flying through the air, bam, taking him out. Just great stuff all over the place. Lots more shooting, lots more action. Interesting use of uh, lettering, sound effects to be the panels on the page. For some reason, I look at this and um, I'm really, really interested to think of what the cartoonist kayfabe guys back when they were doing their thing would think of this type of stuff because they're big with lettering and integrating it into the artwork. It wasn't until they started mentioning stuff like that in their videos where I started like paying attention to it and, and like like actually recognizing it and seeing how it is becomes part of the art. So. Um, kind of interesting. I mean, really interesting. Good use of it. Um, I just, I would never think to do that. But our, uh, Death Slinger girl, she gets caught from behind, zapped, knocked out. The, uh, the new, uh, out of town Death Slinger guy shows up and got her captured. So now she's strung up, captured. They got this device going into her eye because she is a cyborg, I'm guessing. I mean, I'm sorry not guessing, but, you know, whether it's like straight robot or, uh, you know, part human, part robot. But they got her strapped in to dig into her technology. And so they have like a flashback to some past stuff. You know, getting some background on the character. And again, use of different coloring to uh, indicate you're in kind of a different environment, different things are going on. Um, this kind of red and like a memory playback kind of tech, kind of design with the lines running through it like it's video footage, but where it's her memories that we're seeing. So you're getting some backstory on the character. Really fun. Eventually the character snaps herself awake. Again, the lightning bolts, the weird color bubbles going on kind of gets creepy looking in a way, which I, I applaud them. That's awesome. She wakes up, she's gonna break free. Runs back to the people that she's kind of met and been involved with. Um, she's kind of at her lowest point here. She's been through some horrible shit. 
And um, now it's time to rise above it, right? Love the coloring on this page here too. It's such interesting, odd choices. And I don't say that as a negative. It's, it's why I don't color, because I would never think to do anything like that. But she's uh, having to put herself back together. She's got an eye patch on now. She's missing an arm. There's this kind of funny, awesome little weird creature design, like a pet that's running around. I like that a lot. Again, we got a lineup of all these bad guys. Great coloring, the sound effects, all these bad guys showing up, and uh, our Death Slinger girl. She's got this big old cape on, covering up the one arm that was missing. Well, I bet there's something awesome going on. Oh, look, she's got like a giant laser sword thing attached to her now, chopping guys up. That's awesome. I was like, again, great design. Great design work here. It makes me want to draw these characters. I, I would have a lot of fun with that. But it ends with some kind of resolution, um, but then also leaving you on kind of a cliffhanger. The, the characters that she's made connections to and we feel like are kind of the good guys on our side. He's uh, long live the Holy Reich, uh, which was the bad guy, a horrible thing. Uh, he's part of that. Oh my God. To be, to, to be continued in Death, Death Slinger Desolation. So more books to come. So I'm like, oh, all right. Uh, threw a little surprise in here at the end. I'm into it. Continuing on. Like you got a good kind of nice complete action adventure sci-fi western story. Continuing on into another book. And you got some pinups by some different artists. So Milo Trent. There's an Instagram right there. Go look him up. And then there's some kind of, there's a bunch of back matter. Some kind of entertaining stuff that um, is kind of a fun little addition. Um, more pinups. Dustin uh, Tyree. There's his Instagram right there. Havoc200322. And then the Cosmic Lion production. There's some, obviously, like they should. They got a... You know, talk about the stuff that they're doing. So you, uh, you know, you know who they are and what they're making. Um, they were focused. Uh, the cartoonist K Fib guy did put some spotlight on this with the Wizard Magazine stuff that they put together. Some interviews, some preview artwork, more pinups. That one is awesome. Big Bug Daddy by Omac Vera. Instagram right there. Ronin Two K. Um, that one's awesome. I like that coloring on that. That's pretty epic. Um, more, uh, more back matter, more stuff to look at, more pinups. we got Keith Finch, the, uh, letterer and graphic designer of the book. Instagram, real Keith Finch. I like this old school kind of dot print looking, kind of newsprint looking design here. This is Tony Farrow. Instagram, Big Tony 308 and then here is, um, I'm trying to think of the terminology used, but every, every time you're like reading like a, a Marvel comic, there was Stan's Soapbox, right? Stan Lee would write some stuff about what's going on in the world. Um, so there's, this is the, from Eli Schwab, the publisher, the guy kind of running the, the company. And he's got some stuff to talk about in there, um, what's kind of coming up for the Cosmic Lion Productions and all the stuff they're doing. And then look, here is a list of all their books. Like that ain't nothing. That's not, it's not like, it's not nothing. You know, it's not just like, Oh, I made a book. There's like multiple titles, multiple creators, all kinds of stuff to pick up from them. So they're kind of working to be, you know, I, again, I, I have not spoken with any of them directly in any way, so I can't speak for them, but it's like, they're working towards becoming what feels like an actual publisher making comics. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning, how, these guys, you know, you're only going to survive if you get the word out and get you get your, get your work seen. So that's why I wanted to make sure that for this book specifically, there's your previews code. But um, I'll have a link to Cosmic Lion and everything, and uh, go look them up. Go check out the work that they've got. You know, they they they're they're making books, and so. Give them a look and see if you want to support what they do. Here's another pinup, The Repairman. Omak Vera, Ronan 2K, we mentioned him. Um, the Death Slinger Girl, Dave Pretorius. I hope I said that wrong. Instagram, 
red eye draws. Very cool. Very cool. I want to make sure I'm not skipping pages here. And then there's kind of an afterword by Shane Berryhill, the writer, talking about the book and the creative team. And then this little breakdown of them all. I kind of like having things like this. There's your writer, Shane Berryhill, Ben Perkins, Keith Finch, Eli Schwab. Just a little, you know, why not? Sh I, I, I always like putting a face to the creators. I mean, why not? And just talks about them and what they're doing and kind of their experience and... That's uh, that's them. So, Death Slinger, brand new title. You can order it. You can get your uh, local comic shop to order it. If you own a shop and you're wondering about ordering something, you can get this. Gives you an idea of what's in there. You can hit these guys up on by themselves, and they'll, I'm sure they can get you a copy in their hands. Get the word out there. Share this. Um, it's uh, it's important, I think, you know, especially when there are guys that you can tell that are putting in the work because they love to make these things. I think that's 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 good, you know. I don't know some. I like feels like the American comic industry is. It's it's not what it what used to be. Um, you know, remember when Marvel comics and DC comics and Image comics were just the greatest things ever and. Now it's like they don't interest us, most of us anymore. Is that because we're getting older or you just move on to different ideas? Um, I've said for a while, I feel like the kind of future of American comics is like independent, published, crowdfunded works because you don't, you know, you can be a aspiring artist and writer, and but you don't have to go through the big companies to get your work seen. You can just make your own damn stuff with social media. You can get it shown and seen. Uh, you got to put in the work. And you got to reach out and you got to make connections to people, but you can make your own stuff work um, without having to go through the big publishers. And uh, I think that's a great thing. You know, we're kind of in a, the best time of our lives um, as creatives to have the opportunity to have our work seen and get it out there and recognized. So that's good. It, it, it helps everybody if uh, we kind of share the work and get the idea out there. So go look up Death Slinger, go look up the code and previews. Give it a shot, connect with them, share it, spread the word. And um, I guess that's all I've got for now. So uh, I wanted to make sure I mentioned that um, I appreciate it, Shane, for, uh, you know, getting this book to me, for asking, you know, reaching out to me and asking me if I'd be willing to. I mean, it means a lot to me that you guys even think of it. I appreciate it. And um, so Shane and Ben... You, all you guys, you guys have made a really interesting book. You should be proud of it. And um, I hope it does well for you guys. You know, I hope you guys have a lot of success with it. So that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.